Damian Bartonic on behalf of Fox West Texas and the official host of MMA Monday, the only MMA show in San Angelo. Today, I'm joined by someone that is universally regarded as very rude, very mean, someone who not a lot of people like at all, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. Wonderboy, <laughs> how you doing today, baby? <laughs> doing good, man. Doing good. All smiles on this Monday afternoon, my man. Just got done with a good training session. Foot's feeling better. I don't know if you know, I, I broke my foot my last fight in two mm -hmm. places. So I got a lot of startup pain, but I'm still back in the gym, helping our guys get ready for their fights. And it's I'm feeling good, man. I'm feeling good. Back at it. Yeah, I. Uh, it's funny. I guess we uh, we inadvertently are surgery surgery twins or, or recovering because I tore my labrum and my, and my bicep in this shoulder. I had surgery oh, a couple no. weeks ago. Yeah, I tore it during jujitsu. And uh, it, it was a long story, but I ended up competing with it. All that stuff maybe made it a little bit worse, but hey. You sign up to fight, you fight. Wonder Boy, you know that That's better right. than anyone else. I do want to ask, though, speaking of that last fight, um, obviously you fight nothing but the best guys. And someone like Shavkat, I agreed with you when you said, hey, a win over him puts me in the title discussion. Um, you, you came up a little bit short, but, man, you always give it a go. So I want to ask you about that fight. Tell me a little bit whenever you reflect on it, some of the things you're feeling. Obviously, you didn't get the result you wanted, but right. still, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good, man. I mean – you know, when you when you think about it, this was the guy that nobody wanted to face. And I'm not the type of guy to just say, uh, especially if somebody ranked above me or, you know, there's a lot of guys that aren't fighting him because he is good. Like, I've all, I'm always wanting to test myself against the best guy. So why not go up there and give it a shot, right? And, you know, um, you know, I, I didn't expect my man Shavkat to, to wrestle as heavy because he normally doesn't. He normally kind of, you know, you saw him fight Jeff Neal. It was, like a, it was like a standing battle. He tried to get him down, but he spent most of the time standing, working his boxing and things like that. But, um, you know, everybody keeps saying that nobody wants to stand to fight you. But after that fight, it's like, man, these guys are not. They're doing everything they can to get me to the ground, which, I mean, it it that's how they win, man. So I, I definitely have to, uh, you know, constantly keep working on my wrestling and jiu-jitsu. But it's crazy because, one, it's funny how, you know, these guys are so good, one little mistake and it, and, and they'll take advantage of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so and in that second round, he ended up getting my hand tied behind my back and it was kind of downhill from there. But um ended up uh he ended up getting me in a rear naked choke, but I had my chin tugged, so it felt like he was gonna break my jaw. So I was like, Man, break my jaw or or tap, man. So I'm I'm just like, I'm gonna tap, I'm gonna tap, I'm not gonna break my jaw and be out for another year. You know, I'll be forty one in February. But uh, it was it was a good fight, man. It was a good eye opener. And, um, you know, I'm still ranked number six. I'm trying to get back out there uh, as soon as possible to kind of retain that spot. And after a few wins, fight somebody else ranked above me. So I know Colby Covington has called me out, but I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> But we'll see. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I'll ask you something about that uh, and, and, and another question. I actually wanted to talk a little bit about what you just said. You said, um, you know, it was an eye opener for you. You know, these guys want to take you down. Wonderboy, uh, you know, I love you, uh, but I'm kind of taken aback when you say that because Wonderboy, they all want to take you down. I mean, you're, you're undefeated in kickboxing. You're, you're, you know, I can go, I can start talking about all of this stuff. Um, yeah. And and you can't, you can't, you know, you can't be shocked at that because, bro, that's no. the only, that's their only, you know, true path to victory. And while I agree, Shavkat does like to kind of stand in front of him. Shavkat's also a high IQ fighter who he knows better. I mean, yeah. I, I, it's yeah. very rare we see Wonderboy Thompson, uh, you know, starched or on his back or on his butt <laughs> in any way, shape, or form, you know. So um, I, I do want to ask, though, I know you train under Carlos Machado. I've trained at a couple of his gyms before, uh, and I know, you know, his jiu-jitsu is as legit as it comes, right? Uh, I, I want to ask, whenever you have those conversations, though, you said you need to improve the wrestling, the jiu-jitsu. Uh, are there anything specific you can tell me that you're kind of looking at or thinking about? Um, yeah, especially uh, be more threatening, especially when these guys are shooting in, such as, you know, guillotines and things like that. I have, uh, you know, one of Carlos's black belts that I train with here as well. Um, and the dude's a guillotine, just fanatic, man. He can get it from every position. It's, it's wild. But what I'm focused on is, uh, especially at the top of the game where I'm at, you know, there was a point where when I first got in the UFC, somebody in the UFC had told me that, you know, the wrestling is not what got me there. So I was kind of picking up what they were putting down. Mm -hmm. Like, all right, you know, stick to my strike and be exciting, blah, blah, blah. But now it's to the point where, you know, these guys are good everywhere. So for me to stay, especially at the top of the game, I have to continue. I, I'm going to have to show my wrestling. I'm going to have to show my jujitsu. So um, obviously I want to be more aggressive when it comes to my wrestling as well. 
because of the fact is nobody thinks that I have it. And all that's all I've been showing. At one point in time, I told myself, I, I want to be known as the, gra the greatest striker of all time. And in order to do that, you know, I want to keep the fight standing. But at this point in time, trying to work my way up, I can't continue to think that way. I got to be a better mixed martial artist because that's what we're in. Uh, but also be more threatening in those when those guys do shoot. You know, I was watching a fight with Dan Hooker when he fought Gilbert Burns. Uh, Gilbert Burns shot in for a double leg, which we knew was going to happen. But, uh, you know, um, Dan Hooker was so crafty with that guillotine. Uh, he got he kept the fight standing, actually finished Gilbert Burns um, standing up because he was so threatening with that guillotine. Every time he shot in, guillotine, shot in, guillotine. So working on that a lot and uh, being able to play off my back a little bit more as well in guard. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful to hear. It's also interesting because you mentioned, um, you know, just being more, you know, aggressive or attacking, just having that threat of like, if you shoot in, it's not going to be all, you know, it's not going to be ice cream and cake, you know. Yeah. And there's one thing that uh, one thing I was looking at in your fights, too. You can even there's other things you can do. Obviously, I'm not a UFC fighter, but just thinking from afar, uh, even your work in the clinch, man, you saw someone like Leon Edwards, that was kind of like the 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 foundation for, uh, you know, how he improved in the grappling was his yes. work in the clinch. And I, I thought whenever he first or the second time he fought Usman, I was like, man, he's nasty in the clinch. Like a lot of people are sleeping on Leon Edwards grappling. And he's someone who I always point to and say he's someone that has improved so much in the grappling oh, yeah. aspect. Uh, Wonder Boy, it, it's kind of it, to me, I kind of look back and I'm like, I see what you've done and I know you can do it. It's just more so I, I want to see you do it. And, and maybe that time needs to come against a guy like Colby Covington, who you said. I know you said you don't think yeah. it's happening. But typically when Colby Covington does say X, Y, and Z at the press conference, talked a lot of S and, and we want to fight. He did it with George. It happened. He did it with Leon. That's kind of really all he did, you know, with Leon was, was talk a lot. And, you know, he got the fight. Tell me, you really, do you really not think it's going to happen? Like, do you, do you, or are you kind of holding um, out hope? Well, I, no, I mean, it could definitely, it could possibly happen. And we both come off are coming off of a loss and we both have a name. So that's something that, that, uh, we it could happen. I'm not sure what the UFC wants to do with him. That's the thing, because you know the UFC, you know they have their plans with everybody, and you know the guy has gotten three title shots, pretty much almost back to back. Um, so I don't, I'm not sure what the UFC wants to do with him. Do they want to? Do they want him to fight another big name, uh, somebody else, a new blood coming up, or somebody that's been here for a while, such you know, such as myself? But um, I think it could possibly happen. The 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 real BMF versus the NMF, you know, he's, mm -hmm. he's a bad dude, but you know, I, I, I don't think it would be, I I'm looking at it as like a, um, you know, uh, entertainment standpoint. Like, I don't know if there'll be a lot of, he'll probably talk a lot of crap, but you know, I'll just, I'll just sit here and smile at him. So I don't know if it'll be too exciting. Yeah. Well, that was the interesting thing whenever that y'all were in the press conference and he like essentially referred to you in a, in a weird way. Um, yeah and you just basically said don't be jealous that you know like don't be don't be mad you know like basically is what you said i think i said was like don't be mad you don't you uh you can't get a ride in the short bus or something like yeah. that he was making fun of us driving the buses and stuff but i think he was scratching at the barrel when he came up with that one because there was really nothing he could come up with but <laughs> yeah i will wonder boy someone who i've watched a lot of his interviews before um and it, i'm i'm i like the way he typically fights other than this leon fight i do enjoy his style um, yeah. but he has said the same thing that he just told you. I don't know if you watch the interviews ever, but he, that's what he says about you all the time. It's legit. It's verbatim. The same thing. Wonder boy refers himself to as a, as a boy, he's a man, but like it's, yeah. it's legitimately verbatim the same thing. So, you know, moving off of that though, if that fight were to happen, I would love to see it. I know you said from an entertainment standpoint, it makes sense, but from a stylistic matchup, uh, it makes sense too. This is the, you know, striker versus grappler. But the thing is, is one thing that really I think about whenever I look at that fight uh, in a vacuum, he throws a lot of those looping shots, a lot of those head he downs. Does. And I'm like, man, Wonder Boy, that is, you know, that is not the guy to do Kicks it against. <laughs> to the dome piece all day, bro. Yeah. Kicks to the dome. Because he leans, man. I mean, uh, it kind of reminds me of uh, Dominic Cruz, the way Dominic Cruz leans to the side and got caught with a head kick, you know? Yeah. I think, who was that? Who did that? Cheeto Vera. That? That's right. Cheeto Vera yeah. kicked him in the head. That's right. So, yeah, guys that lean like that, man, they're, they're, they're um, you know, they're prone to like kicks to the dome especially right off the bat. It's so fast to get together because they're, they're meeting you in the middle with it. But uh, yeah, I think that would be a fun fight though, for sure. I, but if we do it, it should be like a, maybe like a fight night main event or something or 
or on a big card. I love being on big cards. You know, UFC 300 is coming up and I'm disappointed. I'm not going to be able to be on it, but, um, um, that would be, that would be super cool. I mean, there's, there's all, there's a lot of stuff that could happen, but especially when it comes to me, I'm still ranked number six and, uh, I got to get back out there though. Cause I don't want to stay there for too long. Cause if I'm, if I'm out, cause of my broken foot, if I'm out, then guys will start winning. And then I start moving down the rankings. So I got to get back out there. Um, I didn't take a ton of punishment. The last one, actually, I was kind of disappointed because one of my favorite feelings in the world is walking through the airport the next day, just feeling like I've just been in a battle. You know what I mean? Yeah. Your face is boom, you bruised up, you barely walk. It's like, oh man, this is the best feeling ever. But um, yeah, man, want to get want to get back out there ASAP. And you mentioned you love being on those big cards. Uh, a good buddy of yours, the, the notorious one, is a, is a allegedly coming back uh, in June on the twenty eighth. Is that you think you would be ready for that? Would the foot be ready to go uh, by the time we hit late June? Oh yeah, hundred percent. I you know that I think that would be awesome to be on another card with notorious. But uh, um, yeah, it should be fine. I mean, they gave me like four to five, six weeks, I think, depending on depending on how it feels, because there was two broken bones. But me doing what I do for a living, being in the martial arts, being on the mat constantly, it's like taking a little bit longer to heal just because I'm mm-hmm. on it all the time. So, yeah, man, it's just it's just kind of like a touch and go thing. Like sometimes it feels good, sometimes I get that start of pain, and I just gotta kind of watch it. Yeah, you just got to monitor it very closely. You don't want to do too much. I'm not trying to say you're old, but especially when you're a little bit older in the fight <laughs> game, you got to really kind of be patient with it. Uh, a That's couple right, more for man. you, man. I was wondering, and this is kind of a weird way to put it, but I was wondering, is there like a Wonder Boy wish list of maybe opponents or goals that you have for this year or at this stage of your career? Is there anything in, you know in particular uh, that you're trying to attack and conquer as we kind of hit your you know early to, to mid-40 kind of range? Yeah, man. I mean, here the past year, I've really been focusing a lot on more, especially in training camp, on my recovery time. So to kind of amp that up for 2024 as well, to make sure my body is nice and and and, and healthy stepping out there. Last thing I want to do is be another one of those guys who, you know, don't watch it. Um, they're they're constantly fighting, taking a lot of punishment, and it, and it's one of those guys. I don't want to say any names, but it's like, man, I, I shake my head every time they step out there because I know they're just taking more damage. You know. Yeah. There are a few guys out there right now that I wish would kind of hang it up, but I don't want to be in that in that same boat, you know. Um, but another goal for 2024, obviously, is to work my way up. I would love to fight uh, Leon. I think that would be a great matchup, man. It'd be a, fun, a fun fight. Obviously, that's 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 always the, the the top of the goal. But just constantly bettering myself, man. I, I feel like if that's my mindset, if that is my goal, period, the the success will come. I know a lot of people are just focused on the title or just focused on this. But if you're constantly trying to better yourself every day, slowly but surely, you'll get there. And uh, it will will definitely pay off. So not just in the octagon, but outside of that as well. You know, Um, strengthening my relationship with my fam, family, friends, uh, obviously God, and um, continuing to uh, pursue my dreams in the fight game, man. Like I said, I've been doing this since I was three years old, been fighting since I was 15. And, um, man, this is some, this is something that I told my dad that I would do when I was 12 years old, when he brought me to UFC two in Charlotte, North Carolina, this is, this is what I'm going to do, man. And I love to do it, but I want to do it in the healthiest way possible. So focus on health, focus on, uh, and bettering myself every day. Absolutely. And we were talking a little bit off the air for those that didn't hear, uh, about the old UFC days, man, with the big old shorts and the promotions (laughs) and the banners. Yeah. Wonder Boy's been doing this for a hot minute, man, but um, I do, I do want to want to ask you this as well. I ask this typically to every fighter who's you know ranked or on the come up or trying to win the belt. Um, obviously, you're all trying to win it, but whenever you're in a you know a, a different position, you know a lot of times fighters before they receive the physical belt, they already believe uh, that they are the champion. It's just more so that the the belt is the the um, the deciding factor, the the validation, right? For yep. you, do you feel like you are the champion, or, or you are a champion despite not having the physical belt? 100% man. I th- I feel like anybody that steps out there and puts it all out for everybody to see is is champion in my eyes man. There's a lot of keyboard warriors or people that say they can do this but they can't. They can't cuz they they will never they, <clears throat> they don't have the discipline <clears throat> or the drive to put put out there what what these fighters put out there. The the grind on the day and you know everybody goes through a grind in different ways but when you're when you're in a combat sport, it's a different, it's a different grind. 
if you know what I mean. I mean, you do jujitsu, you know what it's like, man, having forms and people falling on your legs, picking people picking up and slamming you on the reg. Um, it's punishment, man. But um, you know, it, it, in my eyes, you know, everybody that steps out there and puts it on the line for the world to see is champ. I mean, and for me, I'm champ every day, man. Just in my life, in my world, in my in my um, own little bubble, I guess, if you will, um, dude. I, every time I think about it, it, puts a smile on my face. So I think that's what keeps me going. That's what keeps me pushing forward is knowing that I'm capable of beating every one of these guys that have beat me. I'm capable of beating them. Is is going out there and making it happen. And and knowing that I if I go out there and do that, I will be champ. So yeah, man, every day, every day. It's funny because I don't just think it. There, I I have we got you know close to eight hundred and fifty students here. Most of them are kids, kids that I teach. And uh, when they look at me, they they see me as the champ. You know what I mean? I'm not, but they see me as that, and it it, it just it, it's it's awesome, man. It's it's a good feeling. So I want to be a good influence for them and and be the champ, not actually having the belt if I don't get the belt, but being the champ in their eyes. Yeah, that's a beautiful way to put it. And I was going to ask too about just like the visualization aspect of you know whenever you do get the belt or anything like that when you when you win a fight, um, is it hard to like keep those emotions in check? Maybe like not drop a tear or two because I know for me right now all I'm able to do is walk on the treadmill. But I just think back to like man, when I'm competing and I win a gold, you know, I have the silver medal right here in front of me that I got, like, I'll never forget that. I want the gold. I want it. And I think about, you know, my family being there and me winning a, a you know, a, a gold medal at a competition. And it almost makes me cry for you. Does that ever happen to you as well? I, you know, I, I, cause I've been, I think it's because I've been in the game for so long, you know, winning titles and things like that, um, has, has been there. Um, but I think when I win that UFC gold, you can't help but have a, a a big emotion with it because it's not just me that got me there. It's it's those tears would not be shed for me in my effort. It'd be shed for my team, you know, who sacrifice their bodies every day for me to beat up to be able to get to where I'm at. You know, uh, my coaches who spend hours and hours at the gym when they should be with their family. You know, they could could have spent it with their family, my family, my mom and dad, who's been there every day, pushing me every day. Um, knowing that that was my goal at a young age, they never let me give up. You know, even when I was kicking, screaming, not wanting to go to karate class, they were making me go, you know. So it would be for them. If I do share tears, it would be for them, not for myself. So yeah. and it should be for the people that help get you there. Never for yourself. Yeah. Never for yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And that that's everything. I just think of like my like my parents being there and like especially like how how hard it's been for me to like obviously you don't know my life story. Uh, maybe one day we'll 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 share each other's life stories yeah, with one another. Uh but yeah, it's just yeah, I I feel you 100% Wonderboy and this has been a pleasure for me. Uh, that's all the questions I had for you, man. I I really appreciate your time. And if there's anything you'd like to say, anything for the fans, anything that uh just an update for whomever, the floor is yours, man. I'm giving you the floor. Hey, man, I just appreciate you inviting me on. And we got to do it again, Damien. We got to do it again, man. This is awesome, bro. I love hanging out and chatting with you. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, man, just follow me on Instagram and and uh, Twitter at Wonderboy MMA, And hopefully be tuning in. And we'll be letting everybody know where my next fight is. And, and you know, stay on the grind, baby. Stay on the grind. Absolutely. Hey, Wonderboy. Well, I appreciate you again, brother. You have a good one. I know you have a lot of classes. You have some training. You yes, have a sir. lot of stuff to do, baby. So always, man. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll let you go and I'll see you again in the future, my friend. All right, brother. You have a good one, bud.